welcome to the Veterans Day celebration event. We will begin with an opening by Dr. Tara Schwetz. Welcome to the ninth annual Veterans Day celebration. The Veterans Day celebration has become an ongoing tradition with the NIH community, and I'm so pleased to be here today to welcome you and kick off this year's event. Currently, veterans comprise over 5% of the NIH workplace. These employees keep us safe in our labs and on our campuses, prevent cybersecurity breaches, allow our scientific and clinical staff to perform their work in state-of-the-art facilities, execute and manage our contracts, and drive innovation through creative collaborative leadership. It is my honor to work with this dedicated community of civil service. This year's recognition event is embracing the virtual environment and I am pleased to welcome NIH scientists who will share their work on veteran-related research. You will hear from Dr. David Clark, who is the Program Director in Clinical Research in the Division of Extramural Programs at the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health on the Pain Management Collaboratory. Then you will hear from Dr. Joseph Bonner, who is Program Officer at the National Center for Medical Rehabilitation Research at the Eunice Kennedy Shriver National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. He'll share more about the Limb Loss and Preservation Registry. Dr. Jessica Gill is the Acting Scientific Director and Principal Investigator in the Tissue Injury Branch at the National Institute of Nursing Research, and she will reveal information on the impact of brain injuries on military personnel. And then Dr. Lisa Begg, who's a Senior Research Program Officer with the Office of the Director's Office of Research on Women's Health, will address the needs of women veterans. This year's event also shines a spotlight on several of our 900 plus employees who continue their federal service at the NIH. Their leadership skills and ability to acclimate to changing environments provide the building blocks necessary for NIH to meet its mission. Finally, I would like to thank the Veteran Recruitment and Retention Force Planning Committee and the Client Services Division in the Office of Human Resources for their efforts planning and executing this year's event. Thank you all. Presenting next is Dr. David Clark, Program Director with the Division of Extramural Research. Hello, I am Dr. Dave Clark. I am a program director at the National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health Division of Extramural Research. I'm very happy to participate in this 2020 Veterans Day celebration event and to share information on some of our research that impacts veterans. Before joining NCCIH, I provided over 13 years of direct patient care at the VA Medical Center San Diego. Currently, I am the coordinator of the NIH VA DOD Pain Management Collaboratory. This is an amazing cooperative activity and partnership that involves multiple NIH institutes, centers, and offices, and partners with our colleagues at the Department of Veterans Affairs and Department of Defense Research Programs. The Pain Management Collaboratory addresses a critical gap between science and practice in pain management. Despite growing evidence of the efficacy and effectiveness of non-pharmacologic approaches for pain management, no large-scale pragmatic effectiveness studies have been conducted to inform clinical practice. Our purpose is to develop, support, and enact the implementation of large-scale pragmatic clinical research in military and veteran healthcare delivery organizations that studies non-pharmacologic approaches to pain management in innovative and integrative models of pain care delivery. Veterans and active duty service members are much more likely to have chronic pain conditions as compared to the rest of the United States population. It is important to have pain treatments that don't rely on medications such as opioids. This is the focus of the Pain Management Collaboratory. The Collaboratory is testing the effectiveness of non-pharmacologic pain management approaches using pragmatic clinical trial designs. A pragmatic clinical trial is different than a randomized controlled trial in several key aspects. Randomized controlled trials are designed to test the efficacy of an intervention in comparison to appropriate control conditions. 
In these trials, the participants are selected using strict inclusion and exclusion criteria to minimize error, bias, and confounding. Put another way, a randomized controlled trial asks, does the intervention work under ideal circumstances? This is a critical component in developing evidence-based care. Pragmatic clinical trials are used for testing the effectiveness of interventions of proven efficacy in the clinics where these patients are being cared for with few or sometimes no exclusion criteria. Each of the 11 pragmatic clinical trials as part of the NIH VA DOD pain management collaboratory that are underway are testing non-pharmacologic pain interventions of known efficacy. By building on the formative research done with randomized controlled trials that demonstrated these pain interventions work under ideal conditions, the Pain Management Collaboratory is testing to make sure they work in real-world settings. The 11 pragmatic clinical trials are engaged in research designed to make sure these pain treatments work safely and effectively when delivered by VA or military healthcare providers to the veterans, service members, and their dependents who would benefit from these treatments. To learn more about the NIH VA DOD Pain Management Collaboratory, please visit the websites that appear on the screen. The Pain Management Collaboratory website is updated regularly and includes a list of publications resulting from this exciting and important research. This collaboratory would not be possible without the strong commitment and support of the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Department of Defense. I thank you all for your time in watching this video and to the veterans and active duty members watching, thank you for your service to your country. Next is Dr. Joe Bonner, Program Officer with the National Center for Medical Rehabilitation Research. Hello, I'm Dr. Joe Bonner, a Program Officer with the National Center for Medical Rehabilitation Research, or NCMRR, part of the Eunice Kennedy Schreiber National Institute of Child Health and Human Development at NIH. Thanks for having me today. I'm very happy to participate in this 2020 Veterans Day celebration and to share information on some of our initiatives that impact veterans. NCMR's mission is to foster the development of scientific knowledge needed to enhance the health, productivity, independence, and quality of life for people with physical disabilities. We support research across the lifespan, meaning that we support research to benefit children, adults, and older adults with physical disabilities. We also support research to ease the burden on caregivers and to increase community participation of people with physical disabilities. Uh, so this work benefits veterans who acquire a disability while on active duty or after their service is completed. In my role, I'm involved with the development, analysis, and implementation of research initiatives, particularly focused in the study of disability, rehabilitation, and recovery. Today, I'd like to highlight two initiatives that are currently underway with the support of NICHD, NCMRR, and our federal colleagues. First, the Interagency Rehabilitation and Disability Research Portfolio, or IRAD for short, is a searchable database of government-funded research projects in the areas of disability, independent living, and rehabilitation research. IRAD is an interagency initiative headed by the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living, and Rehabilitation Research in partnership with the National Institutes of Health, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the National Science Foundation, the Department of Defense, and the Department of Veterans Affairs. The purpose of IRAD is to provide a publicly available resource that enables analysis of the federal research portfolio in disability, independent living, and rehabilitation research. This will aid in collaboration and coordination of research activities across federal agencies, while also increasing transparency and visibility for public and legislative stakeholders. IRAD went live in October and currently contains information for over 10,000 research projects. For more information, please visit irad.nah.gov. The second initiative is the Limb Loss Research Standards Workgroup, who is working to establish common data elements in the field of limb loss, prosthetic limbs, and rehabilitation. 
this initiative will improve data quality and create opportunities for comparison and combination of data from multiple studies. This interagency work group is led by NICHD and NCMRR in partnership with the National Institute on Disability, Independent Living and Rehabilitation, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the Food and Drug Administration, the Department of Defense, and of course, the Department of Veterans Affairs. The overall goal of this work group is to propose commonly accepted standards to enable coordination in limb loss research. This will allow the community to collect standard information, analyze data with common methods, and share these data across the research community. This will also enable the combination of small studies to produce more powerful evidence to inform policy decisions. The draft standards were developed by the Federal Working Group and will be available for review and comment by the scientific community and the public at large. After review of public comments, the final standards will be uh, available in the National Common Data Element Resource Portal, a resource made available by the National Library of Medicine. Well, IRAD will help us identify areas that need more research. Uh, it will also identify areas of synergy or reduce areas of overlap, so we are spending research dollars as effectively as possible and targeting them to areas of need. The limb loss research standards will help those federal research dollars go further, produce more rigorous research, and allow for new analyses. As researchers develop new devices or new methods for rehabilitation, these efforts will deliver those therapies to more people more quickly. To learn more about NCMRR, please visit our website here. To learn more about IRAD, you can visit the IRAD website here. And for more information about common data elements, you can visit the NIH Common Data Element Resource Portal here. Thank you all for your time in watching this video. And to our veterans and active duty members watching, thank you for your service to your country. Coming up is Dr. Jessica Gill, Acting Scientific Director with the National Institute of Nursing Research. Hello, I'm Dr. Jessica Gill, the Acting Director with the Tissue Injury Branch in the National Institute of Nursing Research, as well as the Deputy Director of the Center for Neuroscience and Regenerative Medicine. I'm very happy to participate in this 2020 Veterans Day celebration event and to share information on some of our research that impacts veterans here at the National Institutes of Health. In my role at NINR, I focus on traumatic brain injuries and their impact on the health and well-being of veterans, as well as the shared risk for psychiatric symptoms, including post-traumatic stress disorder and depression. Specifically, my research examines the risk for neurological and behavioral symptoms following traumatic brain injuries, as well as concussions through the discovery of blood-based biomarkers to identify veterans most at risk and determine methods to intervene to reduce these risks. Yes, absolutely. So I started working with veterans in my master's degree program at the Oregon Health Sciences University in a clinical training program with the Veterans Administration. During this training experience, I became very interested in the issues that veterans were facing as well as their families. And I was compelled to undertake research to improve the care that they were provided. Following this, I completed my PhD at Johns Hopkins and then a postdoctoral fellowship at the National Institutes of Health to develop the skills and experiences needed to develop a program of research to understand the nature of the risk to develop long-term symptoms and their relation to brain injuries and stress. At the brain injury, where I'm the principal investigator, we focus on identifying biomarkers in military personnel, athletes, and civilians to improve the clinical care that we provide to individuals who sustain brain injuries and concussions. My laboratory focuses on determining the nature of individual variability and using this information to understand the nature of biological risk. I'm also involved in the Center for Neurosciences and Regenerative Medicine, where we are using this information to inform clinical trials to reduce these risks and to treat the chronic symptoms that often result from a traumatic brain injury, especially in veterans. 
Also, I'm working with the project Center on Chronic Effects of Neurotrauma Consortium, or CENSI, which is centered at the Virginia Commonwealth University under the direction of Dr. David Sifu. In this study, we are following a cohort of 1,500 veterans and linking changes in blood-based biomarkers to changes in the brain, as well as to symptoms and behavior. This is a very exciting opportunity as it allows us to collaborate across the country to address the complex issues in a collaborative and comprehensive manner to improve the health and well-being of veterans and their families. One of our consistent findings has been that multiple traumatic brain injuries, and especially having more than three brain injuries, places veterans at higher risk for long-term neurological and behavioral symptoms and also to changes in blood proteins, including measures of inflammation and elevations of tau and neurofilament light chain. We think that these elevations in proteins may contribute to changes in the way the brain functions and may indicate changes that increase the risk for the development as well as the maintenance of these chronic symptoms. To learn more about traumatic brain injury and the impact of brain injuries on military personnel, please visit the resources that you see on the screen. I thank you all for your time in watching this video. And to the veterans and active duty service members watching, thank you so much for your service to your country. And thank you to the families that support these veterans and active duty military personnel. Next in line is Dr. Lisa Begg, Research Program Officer with the Office of Research on Women's Health. Hello, my name is Dr. Lisa Begg. I'm a Senior Research Program Officer with the Office of Research on Women's Health at the NIH. I'm very happy to participate in this 2020 Veterans Day celebration event and to share information on some of our research that impacts veterans in my role at ORWH, I'm involved with research collaborations between the NIH, the Department of Defense Centers of Excellence in Psychological Health and Traumatic Brain Injury, the Department of Veterans Affairs, and other federal agencies. ORWH is one of the original funding partners for the NIH DOD VA Pain Management Collaboratory. This project was funded in 2017 and is ongoing, and it's comprised of 11 large-scale, multi-site pragmatic clinical trials. The research focuses on implementation and evaluation of non-pharmacological approaches to the management of pain and common co-occurring co conditions in military and veteran healthcare systems. Non-pharmacological approaches include mindfulness, meditation, yoga, spinal manipulation, acupuncture, and other practices to complement current strategies for pain management and to reduce the need for and the ha hazards of excessive reliance on opioids. Another example of ORWH's participation in veterans-related research is a postdoctoral fellowship that we um, just completed with Lieutenant Colonel Kim Hopkins. Um, and what what uh, her fellowship entailed was ORWH um, work with her, uh, and she was the lead on it, um, in terms of creating a whole patient and healthcare provider booklet on polycystic ovary syndrome. This is an understudied area across uh, the research area, so we appreciated um, Lieutenant Colonel Hopkins' expertise and dedication to this. When she developed the uh, booklet, she also disseminated it to DOD, including the Army, Navy, and Air Force, medical and nursing, and the community. Additionally, uh, she disseminated it at the 2019 PCOS Challenge, the National Polycystic Ovary Syndrome Association Awareness Weekend event, the largest event dedicated to the education and raising awareness and to raise funds for PCOS. Another study that um, Lieutenant Colonel Hopkins did was the Tri-Service Nursing Research Program's Research and Evidence Practice Dissemination Course, um, DOD Conference uh, for Military Nursing Scientists, 
researchers, leaders, and clinical experts for the dissemination of clinical innovation, research findings, and evidence-based practice projects. Finally, the, the last study I wanted to highlight directly relates to women veterans. ORWH is funding a research study through the Birch Career Development Program based at the University of Kentucky. Trajectories of Mental Health and Psychological Functioning in Recently Returned Women Veterans is the name of the project. Dr. Lawrence is the lead for it. She is within the training program Birch. The study's aim is to investigate prospective longitudinal psychosocial functioning and relationships with mental health and deployment stressors in recently returned Iraq and Afghanistan women veterans. This study, um, more information about this study can be obtained by contacting Dr. Lawrence at the University of Kentucky directly. I'm very happy you asked about this because I covered quite a bit of information. So to learn more about ORWH's programs and initiatives, you can visit our website which is attached to this interview. We are calling attention to the 30th anniversary meeting that we will be holding virtually on December 15, 2020. And feel free to contact me via email as well. I'd be happy to talk with you and, um, and respond to any of your questions. I thank all of you for your time in watching this video and to the veterans and active duty members watching. Thank you for your service to our country. Up next in the program is the Veterans Spotlight. My name is Jim Gilman. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of the NIH Clinical Center. I'm a 35-year veteran of the United States Army, retiring in 2013 as a Major General. My name is Amber Reed, and I served as a public health technician in the United States Air Force for four years. Currently, I work at the NIH in the National Eye Institute's Office of Regenerative Medicine. So my name is Danny Dickerson. I served 17 years as a paralegal in the United States Air Force and three years as an administrative professional. I currently serve as the Director of Diversity and Inclusion within the Office of Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. Hi, my name is Gerard Roman. I served the U.S. Army for 21 years. Currently, I work at the NIH Office of Equity, Diversity and Inclusion. I enjoy overseeing the care of all the patients who are enrolled in our clinical research trials here at the, the NIH. I try to make sure that they get a, a great safe care, that they have a, uh, the best uh, patient experience possible, and that, that they know how much we appreciate uh, their partnership in this clinical research enterprise. What I enjoy most about my current role is being able to make a contribution in an exciting field. My job offers a wide variety of opportunities that brings varied work and challenging projects. Thankfully, I belong to a strong and cohesive team that makes it possible to tackle each challenge. I enjoy the fact that within diversity and inclusion, I am not only able to have an effect on the current population of NIH employees uh, in a positive manner, the, I can also possibly affect future employees uh, as we work to ensure fairness for all here at the NIH. Uh, I enjoy supporting our diverse teams, working on mentoring, networking, outreach, and helping our workforce achieve their best. One of the best skills that translated over from my time in the service is maintaining a strong work ethic. In the military, our work ethic and productivity were a direct reflection of us. Another skill that has allowed me to succeed in my current role is being able to adapt. As soon as I started at the NIH, I was assigned to an office that was just being established. Instead of having concrete projects and SOPs already in place, we had to remain flexible and adapt and overcome the barriers and challenges we were facing as a new office. Aside from keeping a strong work ethic, I bring all my leadership skills and my ability to deal with diverse groups of people. The ability to adapt my leadership styles to others, those who work above me and those who work along beside me, has allowed me to grow 
uh, other individuals and their leadership. I also bring the ability to build strong teams. I have still in others the ability to focus on the mission, and this has been extremely important uh, here at NIH because it has such a wonderful mission. The skills that I gained from the Department of Defense Equal Opportunity Management Institute and the experiences that I developed supporting military communities gave me a significant advantage in my transition to the NIH. I feel those experiences it goes hand in hand with our vision of helping make NIH a premier place for diverse talent. I think the thing that I learned from all my time in the military that it was the most important to what I do now is the need to balance uh, accomplishment of a very important and complex mission with uh, the need to make sure that the people who are uh, helping us achieve that mission have their needs met as well. Uh, that it is, it's a balance of the mission and, and the people that, that work here in the clinical center. Military life uh, helped me develop a strong work ethic and also helped me develop a special bond with those that work next to me. I learned the importance of being flexible, being able to adapt, and to be ready to execute the alternate plans at any time. Well, to all veterans, uh, on uh, this day when we honor uh, all their service, uh, thank you all for your service and thank you to the NIH for recognizing veterans today. I would like to sincerely thank my fellow veterans, especially those that came before me and paved the way that allowed me to take advantage of some amazing opportunities. I would also like to thank the NIH for taking the time and recognizing the veteran community. Uh, to all the uh, veterans that have served this great country, um, whether you were there for short term or long term, I'm extremely proud to be listed along beside so many wonderful men and women who have uh, made the ultimate sacrifices to serve this country. So I'm uh, extremely proud to be part of this group and I wish you all the best of luck in your future. To all my fellow veterans, thank you for serving our nation. And for all my fellow co-workers at the NIH, thank you for recognizing and supporting the veteran community. Thank you. Closing our program is Beth Chandler, Deputy Director of the Office of Human Resources. We would like to thank the Client Services Division in the Office of Human Resources and the Veterans Recruitment and Retention Force for helping to make this event possible. We would also like to thank Drs. David Clark, Joseph Bonner, Jessica Gill, and Lisa Begg for their very informative presentations. I enjoyed meeting, through video, some of the talented NIH employees who served in the military, and I'm thankful that they have brought their skills and leadership abilities to the NIH. If you would like to learn more about our veteran recruitment activities, we invite you to view the upcoming events section of the Office of Human Resources webpage at hr.nih.gov. Finally, we would like to thank those of you who joined us today to watch and learn from each of our experts and for showing support to our veterans here at NIH. A recording of the event will be available for later viewing and we encourage you to share it with your colleagues. As we prepare for the national celebration of our veterans tomorrow, I would like to take this time to thank every veteran for their military service and for continuing their service to our country here at the NIH. Thank you.